Another point which you need to remember that you can't transport or you can't keep these organs indefinitely in this solution. Okay, Organs cannot be kept indefinitely outside the body. So all the organs have a cold ischemia time. The cold ischemia time is the maximum time you can keep an organ outside the body. And you need to memorize the cold ischemia times for all the organs. This is important for the exam. So heart has the least cold ischemia time. Heart has the least cold ischemia time of 4 hours. That is why you must have read in papers that a green corridor or a green channel is created when an ambulance is carrying a heart for transplant. Right? They stop all traffic and they just allow the ambulance to go through. Because it's literally a race against time. You just have 4 hours. Then lungs. Lungs is 6 hours. Small intestine 8 hours. Liver is 10 to 12 hours. And kidneys have the maximum cold ischemia time. This has also been asked. Kidney has the maximum cold ischemia time of 24 to 36 hours. So these values you need to remember for the exam. Now let's talk about renal transplant. Majority of the questions have been asked from renal transplant. Now in renal transplant, the most common indication, the most common indication for renal transplant in adults and in children. In adults, the most common indication is chronic kidney disease, CKD, that is chronic kidney disease, secondary to diabetes mellitus. So, in other words, diabetic nephropathy is the most common indication for renal transplant in adults. And when we are doing a renal transplant for diabetic nephropathy, we, com we do a combined renal plus pancreatic eyelid transplant. We do a combined renal plus pancreatic islet transplant so that it takes care of the diabetes part as well. In children, on the other hand, the most common indication in children is glomerulonephritis. Is glomerulonephritis. So this is with regards to the indications for renal transplant. So, the problem in transplant surgery is that you always have more recipients but less number of donors. So, this mismatch always persists. There are more recipients, less donors. So, to bridge the gap, to bridge this gap, expanded donor criteria expanded donor criteria have been released for renal transplant. The expanded donor criteria for renal transplant say that any patient who is fit and above the age of 60 years as well can donate his or her kidneys or a patient who is more than 50 years of age with two or more of the following with two or more can also donate the kidneys. What are the criterias? The criterias are if there has been a death in this patient due to a stroke or there is history of hypertension or the serum creat is more than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter. So, even these patients, their kidneys can be used for renal transplant. So, because we are talking about donors, you, I have covered this point in urology as well, that usually the left kidney of the donor is preferred because the left kidney has a longer renal vein and it makes it easier for anastomosis. 
Now, another very important thing which you should know, what are the investigations which need to be done in a donor? Investigations in a donor before renal transplant. So, we need to check for ABO compatibility. We need to check for HLA compatibility. And HLA compatibility is important because HLA antigens are the ones which are responsible for hyperacute graft rejection. They are the ones who are responsible for hyperacute graft rejection. Which HLAs are important in renal transplant? A, B and DR. A, B and DR are the three which are which are important in renal transplant. And amongst these also the question which has been asked that DR is the most important in renal transplant, HLA DR. So a simple way to remember this is DR is dear for a renal transplant patient. Right, this is the most important HLA which is important. Other things which need to be measured, you need to check for RH compatibility. Then in a donor, we need to measure the kidney function test. We need to do an ultrasound KUB and we also need to do a renal isotope scan. We need to do a renal isotope scan. Now, if you remember your lecture in urology, I told you that there are three types of renal isotope scans. You have DMSA, DTPA and MAG3. DMSA, DTPA and MAG3. Out of these three, DMSA is the best for structure. Remember S for structure or scarring. DMSA is the best for structure or scarring and DTPA and MAG3 are good for function and out of these three, MAG3 is the best for function. MAG3 is the best for function. Now you might be wondering that why are we doing this scan in a renal donor? So these scans tell me about the total renal function, they tell me about the total GFR. So let's assume that the total GFR is 100. Okay, let's assume that the total GFR is 100. But the more important information which they provide me is the differential GFR. Differential GFR means how much is the right kidney and how much is the left kidney contributing to this 100, right? So, for example, I have a patient where the right kidney is contributing 20% and left kidney is contributing 80%. Now, why is this important? Because I just told you that the left kidney is the preferred donor kidney. But if you end up removing the left kidney in such a patient, the poor donor will now require a transplant. Okay, so the purpose of doing a renal isotope scan is it tells you if both the kidneys are functioning equally or not and which kidney to harvest in a donor. So this was regarding the donor. Now in the recipient, in the recipient, kidneys can either be placed Kidneys can either be placed in an orthoptic manner or a heterotopic manner. What does this mean? Orthoptic mean if you keep the kidney in the normal anatomical, if you keep the kidney in the normal anatomical position. If you keep the kidney in the normal anatomical position, it is orthoptic. But if you keep it in a different location, it is heterotopic. It is a heterotropic transplant. Please remember that renal transplants are usually heterotopic in nature. And the most common site for renal transplants, we kept, keep it in the iliac fossa. The transplanted kidney is kept in the 
iliac fossa. Now, when you are doing this transplant, three anastomoses are required. Okay, you will do a renal artery anastomosis, and this has to be an end to side anastomosis with external iliac artery of the recipient. Renal vein end to side anastomosis with the external iliac vein and the ureter and the ureter is anastomosed with the bladder. Ureter is anastomosed with the bladder. So, as we have discussed many times for arterial or venous anastomosis, proline is used. Whereas, for the anastomosis of ureter with bladder, Vicryl or PDS will be used. Okay. So, these are the three anastomoses which are to be carried out. Now, let us talk about the complications following renal transplant. Majority of the questions have been asked regarding this topic only. So, this is very important. Now, the complications of renal transplant. Number one. The most common cause of mortality, mind you, most common cause of mortality following renal transplants are cardiovascular causes, are cardiovascular causes, okay. So, this is the most common cause of mortality following renal transplant. Other complications following renal transplant, you can have rejection. And lots and lots of questions have been asked from renal rejection. So, renal rejection can be of three types. Renal rejection can be of three types. You can either have hyperacute, you can have acute, or you can have chronic rejection. Hyperacute, acute, and chronic rejection. Now, hyperacute rejection occurs on table on table that means as soon as you do the anastomosis the kidney will turn dusky and it will not produce urine right as soon as you do the anastomosis the kidney turns dusky and it does not produce urine and hyperacute rejection occurs due to preformed antibodies and i just told you that these are usually HLA antibodies. Now, because this occurs due to preformed antibodies and occurs immediately, this is type 2 hypersensitivity. This has also been asked. This is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. And hyperacute rejection, the incidence can be reduced if proper pre-matching is done. We can reduce the incidence if you do proper pre-matching. Acute rejection, this question has also been asked. This is a direct line out of Bailey within 6 months. Acute rejection can occur within 6 months. And acute rejection is mainly due to immunological causes. It is due to immunological causes. That is why... This can be reduced by effective immunosuppression. By effective immunosuppression, you can reduce the incidence of acute rejection. And the consequence is that there is a more than 95% one year graft survival rate for renal transplants. There is a more than 95 percent graft survival rate, one year graft survival rate for renal transplants. This is an important question. Chronic rejection is now the most common renal rejection. This question is also being asked. Chronic rejection is now the most common renal rejection and this 
is a delayed type of rejection because it is delayed it will be type 4 hypersensitivity it will be type 4 hypersensitivity so these are the important points regarding renal rejection you need to remember these the third complication you know that patients who have received a transplant in them immunosuppression is done because of immunosuppression they are at an increased risk of infections and the most common organism which infects transplanted patients renal transplanted patients is CMV most common organism is cytomegalovirus these patients are also at an increased risk of malignancies because of immunosuppression and the most common malignancy this is also important most common skin tumors and among skin tumors also it is squamous cell carcinoma it is squamous cell carcinoma one more complication which you should know about is PTLD PTLD stands for post transplant post transplant lymphoproliferative disorder post transplant lymphoproliferative disorder and PTLD occurs due to Epstein Barr virus occurs due to Epstein Barr virus so these were the points which are important for renal transplant and renal transplant complications you need to remember these for the exam